Welcome back to another RCWorks video. Today we are talking about affluent filters, how they can extend your drain field life, definitely going to save you some money, as well as some things to consider when shopping for affluent filters, and a variety of other things having to do with affluent filters. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to start this video off by talking about why affluent filters are important to use in your system. So the biggest advantage to using affluent filters in a system is that you're going to greatly extend your drain field life. Now you may wonder why is that going to extend the drain field life? Well, we're going to have a quick overview of how a septic tank works just so that you can get the gist. All right, so here we are. Um, so just a very, very quick overview of a septic tank. You've got your inlet, you've got your outlet. This will be our imaginary affluent filter. Um, so your solids come in, plop into the tank just like so. And over time, that concentration kind of becomes more sporadic in terms of the suspended solids. We call those uh, TSS, total suspended solids. And um, they are in a higher concentration over here than they are over here. So ideally, the more time, more space and less movement of the water, the less total suspended solids are going to go out to the drain field. And that's where our affluent filter comes into play. So let's talk a little bit more about affluent filters right now. So now that we've learned a little bit about the basics of a septic system, obviously we could talk about it for a lot longer, but the main idea of an affluent filter is it's going to help reduce the TSS or total suspended solids in, a, in a, your drain field. So that's important because typically a drain field only has a certain amount of life in it and by putting solids into the drain field, it's going to eventually plug up the porosity of the drain field and you're going to end up with failure. Now a thing to remember when you're talking about total suspended solids is not every solid that's in the septic tank is organic. And those inorganic solids are what are really going to cause you long-term problems because those are the, th the ones that aren't going to be able to break down. An additional benefit to affluent filters is they're going to prolong your pump life. The main feature being they're going to prevent the pump from clogging. If you're using a high head style affluent pump, then it's pretty common for those to have only an eighth of an inch or so um, solids handling capacity. So with an affluent filter in place, it's going to help to prevent those solids from getting to the pump. And it's also going to minimize the amount of solids period that get into the system, even that can pass through the filter um, so that they don't accumulate and bulk up. So it's going to extend the pump life, extend the drain field life, all great things. I'm going to cheat on this one and use my notes just because then I won't have to make so many cuts or Jeremy won't have to make so many cuts. But anyway, so when you're shopping for an affluent filter, uh, an important thing to consider is the total flow area. And that's actually one thing that most affluent brands don't make readily available is the total flow area. And just so you can kind of understand what total flow area is, um, let's just use this as an example here. Uh, so you've got the surface area, which is the entire size of the, the the surface area of the entire filter. The flow area is just these small holes in the filter that the effluent is able to pass through. So when we're talking about flow area, we're talking about the area that the liquid actually flows. Makes sense. Okay, so now that we know the difference between flow area and surface area, obviously a higher flow area is going to make your filter more effective in terms of capacity more than anything. So if you've got a greater flow area, obviously these filters need to be serviced. And if it's not so obvious, these filters need to be serviced periodically. The greater your flow area, the more uh, filtration that can occur before the thing starts to get plugged up and you need to clean it off. Now cleaning these filters is generally pretty easy. The Orenco filters make it very easy and a lot of other brands make it pretty easy. Bas pull it out, spray it off with a garden hose with a pressurized nozzle on it and it's clean ready for action so it's not a terribly difficult thing to clean unless you don't like doing that stuff or you've got to hire someone to come out and do that stuff then flow area becomes important because uh, the less the flow area the more often you have to clean it now Interestingly enough, Orenco actually has the greatest flow area of any of the brands that I'm familiar with. Um, actually, 30% of the surface area on their filters 
our flow area, uh, which is significantly higher. We'll show you a quick graphic. Um, so you can see from this graphic that when we were comparing the residential effluent filters, uh, the Renko, the most common one being the one second from the left, is um, that, that's the most common one. And that one has a considerably higher total flow area as compared to some of the other brands listed here. Um, and that basically translates to significantly reduced time um, or I'm sorry, that translates to significantly increased time in service and less time spent maintaining the filtration system. So again, one more graphic for you. This will drive the point home on the flow area of the filters in reference to how often they need to be maintained. And this is where you'll notice that the larger your filter, the less frequently you have to maintain it and thus getting a larger filter makes sense. So we're looking here at the mean time between cleanings. So you can see from this graphic that the 44436 again is the most common one. That's the dashed line one. And uh, that particular one, if you're in an average size home around 250 gallons per day, you don't have to clean this thing but once every 10 years. Now we recommend once every four years here we are back again and uh, now the next thing to consider is hole size. Uh, there are a variety of hole sizes on the market. Arenko primarily does eighth inch, that's kind of their bread and butter. They also have one sixteenth inch, more because other people do it and it's kind of popular. Uh, but interestingly enough, when you're trying to reduce your TSS, again the Arenko effluent filters can do about two thirds reduction of TSS in a one eighth inch uh, hole size. And this is a mesh configuration, as you saw when we kind of took the zoomed in look at the BioTube pump, pump vault to my right. Um, so that one eighth of an inch hole size is able to accomplish about a two thirds reduction in the TSS, which is significant when you look at like a 16th inch mesh, which is roughly half the size, um, you get almost the same exact reduction. But the interesting thing there, of course, is you're gonna have less total flow area. So when you're looking at similar performance in terms of TSS reduction, but you've got a greatly reduced flow area, it makes sense to just go with the one eighth of an inch hole size because that interval in between cleanings is gonna be significantly better. Um, so that's kind of enough about hole size. Okay, so let's talk a minute about the two most common types of affluent filter whole size types, I guess. So you've got slotted and then you've got mesh style. Those are the most common that you're gonna find out there. Uh, so the mesh style, like we've already seen, and then the slotted style would be like this guy right here. So this is a polylock filter, um, and this one has the slots in it. So you can see as a relationship surface area to the amount of material we have here and the amount of total flow area to the amount of material we have here, it really doesn't look all that bad. Um, but the biggest thing that I personally think about the slotted ones is you have a higher potential for material that is greater than one eighth of an inch in some dimension uh, to pass through, like hair and things like that. I would think that those things are gonna pass through a slotted filter easier than they would a mesh filter because it's just, you got a longer opening. So um, more opportunity for certain materials to actually pass through the filter, thus maybe not providing as great of a benefit to protecting your drain field, which in the long run is the whole point of an affluent filter. So not necessarily saying that's good or bad, but I think it's something to consider uh, when selecting an affluent filter. One common rating that you will find in the affluent filter market is the gallon per day rating. Uh, most affluent filters out there will say up to 2,500 gallons per day or 5,000 gallons per day. The gallon per day rating is not really an indication of total flow area. It's merely an indication of its ability to pass water because what we found in our research is that typically when they're determining a flow per day rating for an affluent filter, they'll just run a bunch of water through it and as much water as they can run through it without incurring um, friction loss is what they'll rate it for. Um, 
but when you when you're comparing that to the total flow area that greater flow area is actually going to equate to more time between it getting plugged so for example if you had a affluent filter with a horrible flow area that was rated by some standard who knows what they rated it based on uh, for 5,000 gallons per day and then you had another filter with 5,000 gallons per day rating with 10 times the flow area well if you were actually running that 5,000 gallons per day through that filter then this one is going to plug up considerably faster so I just want to make that correlation clear and I think that what you want to recognize is that the greater the flow area the greater the performance more specifically in terms of how frequently you have to service it um, because if you're eighth of an inch versus eighth of an inch whole size versus slotted um, or flow area if I had a mesh configuration with that was an eighth of an inch with half the flow area you would essentially get the same performance out of it in TS TSS reduction but you would have a higher interval of cleaning so I hope I've made that point pretty clear all right, another thing that you're probably going to see if you do much shopping for the filters is the NSF 46 rating. So uh, one thing I want to point out is it's not terribly difficult to get the NSF 46 rating, more or less it's a cost issue. Um, but the interesting thing about the rating is that it's not a long-term study that's done on these products, it's a seven-day test where they're trying to minimize solids greater than three sixteenths of an inch so if you've got an eighth inch mesh filter or slotted filter you're not going to allow um, those three sixteenths inch solids through and you're going to as long as you don't plug up within seven days under normal circumstances, which a, uh, a normal number in a residential application would be 85 milligrams per liter is normal for a residential uh, application in terms of TSS. So uh, when you're reducing it by two thirds, you're picking up you know two thirds of that. That's a very small, finite amount of actual material. Uh, so as long as your filter can make it seven days and collect the majority of the 3 16 inch solids under those regular circumstances and criteria, you're going to get that NSF approval. So long story short, that is not indicative of a quality product. It's merely indicative of a product that passed a very, very low bar um, and really I think that we need to look beyond that it's not bad but it's not great so uh, moving on so just one thing I want to throw out there in terms of an existing system if you happen to cross this video because you're concerned about your drain field or whatever it's never too late to install an affluent filter on an existing system you simply got to lower the liquid level preferably um, you know but anyways uh, lower the liquid level cut off the sanitary T and plop on an effluent filter and you're protecting your system all right so we'll wrap it up here um effluent filters good not effluent filters bad no uh, one last thing just to mention um, is basically when you're putting in a septic tank usually when you're building a new home or putting in a drain field consider the value of oversizing the tank and oversizing the drain field because uh, it can actually provide some pretty significant value when you consider the fact that when we went through our quick example of how a septic tank generally works um, the total or the, the solids enter the tank and are separated out and by having a larger tank you have more space in between the solids entering and the solid and the material leaving the affluent leaving so you get better separation of the materials your TSS is going to ultimately settle out more effectively before it gets pushed through the affluent filter so you're actually gonna have less times that you're gonna have to clean this thing so you're gonna extend the maintenance time interval uh, on the affluent filter by doing that and you're also going to greatly extend the drain field life by oversizing this septic tank because those TSS's are never the total suspended solids are never getting into the affluent filter to begin with because they're separating out more effectively um, which when you've got a finite amount of time on a drain field 
a slightly oversized tank, spending that extra 500 bucks to get an extra 500 gallons, you'd be surprised how much that's gonna reduce your total suspended solids. An undersized uh, system or a system that is overused, whereas it was sized for a family of three, you know, three bedrooms, what have you, and then you got 12 people living in the house. Um, those are situations where an affluent filter is also going to greatly benefit you because overloading a system is gonna have a huge impact on the amount of solids getting into the drain field. And ultimately, you're gonna have premature drain field failure because you're gonna have a higher concentration of suspended solids getting to the drain field because of the rate that the liquid is moving through the system, it just doesn't have sufficient time to separate. Um, so keep all that stuff in mind. Thanks so much for joining us today. I know this one was a little bit long, but hopefully you learned something and uh, have a little bit more respect for affluent filters and really how much value they can provide for your system. So uh, we'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.